Good morning and welcome to day two of um, Sex, Drugs in Scotland, Sexual Health. We now have a session on HIV testing oral papers um, and um, I'd just like to welcome everybody, hope everybody slept well. And just before we go into the session, we have a few T's and C's that I'd like to just share with you. Um, we have a zero tolerance policy for any abuse or attack, any comments or questions that are deemed inappropriate will mean that you won't be able to speak and engage in the narrative within this session. We're all here in the spirit of active listening and in this new and emerging world of online everything, we still are developing ways of doing it. So we just ask for kindness, consideration and positive engagement and wish everybody a productive and, um, and, 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 and fun-filled session. So the content's rich. We've got the first presentation from Terms Higgins Trust. Jimmy Hunter, who's a health promotion specialist based in Dundee, working for Terence Higgins Trust, and David Bingham, who works for Terence Higgins also, based out of the Glasgow office. Over to you, Jimmy. Good morning, everybody. Um, it's great to be here to present this session on uh, testing. Um, testing then and now. Uh, so what Dave and I are going to be talking about this morning is how testing has evolved over the, the past decade or so and more particularly uh, how COVID has changed direction and influenced how we provide our services. Um, so Dave is going to kick off with the first few slides. Okay, and Jim is going to have to uh, change the slides because he's got control at that end. So uh, here we go. So uh, yeah, so how it all began. So. Uh, my colleagues uh, uh, south of the border in England have been doing community testing for a while, uh, but in 2014, we be began providing uh, free HIV and sexual health testing across the country. Uh, and this was funded specifically uh, by uh, an anonymous uh, donor, and it enabled us to kind of introduce a kind of a new way of testing for HIV. And originally, we were just doing a, a, a simple uh, rapid HIV test using uh, the ALEA uh, fourth generation for antibody and antigen. And then that expanded uh, in terms of online and into community clinics. And in the first stage, we used to use home sampling, uh, different to HIV home, uh, fast tests where you test at home. Home sampling was where you basically had a kit sent to your house you put a sample of your blood into a vial, sent it away, and then all kinds of tests were kind of processed. And it included HIV and hepatitis uh, B and, uh, and uh, syphilis. And that's kind of how it works. So, so uh, we introduced full STI screening for people across Scotland. And this included uh, testing for HIV, syphilis, chlamydia, gonorrhea, and hepatitis B and hepatitis C. And this started really in the community clinics. We had uh, weekly community clinics, but we also had drop-in clinics at our, our offices in Glasgow. And then we expanded those across Scotland where else we had uh, uh, contracts. For example, we also had community drop-in clinics in, uh, in Dundee in a place called Swan House. And you can see here some of the comments. Had to say this is by far the best sexual health service I've had. Polite, courteous, non-judgmental uh, treatment. I felt safe. The service was excellent. Everybody was really friendly and received an, an appointment straight away. Uh, attentive and non-judgmental staff, very thorough service. The staff were very friendly. And it's really worth noting at this point, all the staff that actually did the testing had to go through uh, vigorous training. And that, that's still the case. So you had to uh, kind of do some induction training. You had to work through a kind of clinical workbook. You had to be monitored by a registered nurse. And then you had to demonstrate that you were able to do all these tests uh, with at least 10 different uh, clients, all from different diverse backgrounds. And eventually you were signed off if the nurse thought you were competent and capable. And that's, that's the case still, so. And this is kind of, uh, after the three years, we did a report and uh, we kind of started to pull some of the comments uh, from that report. And uh, this, this always kind of jumped out at me from the report. It's great that this surface exists. Without it, I would never have known I was living with HIV. I was referred into other services quickly 
and was able to start treatment. I know I will live a healthy life and this, will not, this would not have been the case if I hadn't been encouraged to test. And this person I know specifically, uh, you know, went on to talk about their experience in terms of living with HIV uh, out in the public. Uh, so for them, uh, this way of testing really helped them know their status sooner rather than later. So as a result of um, funding that we received uh, some years ago, we were able to expand uh, the testing initiatives. So we started testing um, in all sorts of different venues. You can see uh, a selection here. And we also reflected um, some national initiatives like European Testing Week. Um, and we started to become very, very popular uh, in colleges and universities, and we still are. And those are really good places to actually test. When you think about a demographic, um, we, we target gay and bi men and men who have sex with men. HIV services in general tend to target LGBT. Um, if you aim your service at a student um, organization, you're going to get your demographic that comes out of that. So we discovered that through the funding that we had, we could do full STI screening in a variety uh, of environments. And that led to a number of um, initiatives in terms of getting people to build testing and sexual health testing into their routines. So here are a couple of examples. A couple of years ago, um, it was recognized that syphilis had become uh, an epidemic. Um, so working together with our partners at NHS Tayside Sexual Health, um, this was one of the campaigns that we actually uh, went nationwide with across Scotland. And it was a really good campaign because it brought people out um, to recognise the fact that STIs weren't something that was left behind in the 1850s and actually it's prevalent now and something needs to happen now. Um, currently, we've got a Get Your Sexual Health MOT campaign running. And again, as a result of what we saw through COVID and after COVID, and I know that a, a lot of that has been mentioned in various different sessions in this conference, we have recognised that we need to change how we deliver our services and how we focus on getting people um, to take a test, where they take a test, and that leads neatly into our online testing initiatives. We've, uh, like I said, uh, colleagues down south have been delivering kind of different types of tests for a while. But uh, we, this uh, initiative, it's a free home HIV test where you do your own test at home and get a result within 20 minutes. It's been around since about 2018. And originally, this was funded, private, uh, kind of funded uh, by uh, a, a private funder. And so everybody could order a test for free. Uh, it was a simple test. It was a BioSure test, uh, which is uh, still often used uh, by different organizations across the UK, and I, pre I presume across Europe as well. So it's a simple uh, finger prick test, and you can get a result within probably five, five minutes to uh, 20 minutes, depending on how, how, how fast you uh, kit takes and it's sent to your home if you can't have it sent to your home for any particular reason you can also do a click and collect option so you can kind of choose a designated uh, kind of uh, pickup point uh, a bit like amazon i suppose you can go to a, a, a different place like a news agent there's various places and these are highlighted uh, on the website when you order your click and collect as well so next slide So as you can see here, since uh, 2018, uh, in Scot uh, across the UK, uh, 46,840 uh, 46, tests, uh, 14 tests have, have been requested. We can also see that 11,297 people had never tested before. And I talked about this click and collect and 4,918 people did the click and collect process. Out of those, 139 were reactive. Uh, if you look at Scotland, you can see that uh, since 2018, 6,284 tests have requested. And of those, 
1,656 had never tested before. And you can see that predominantly it's a high risk groups, it's men who have sex with men, but there are other groups in there that are also people with high risk partners injecting drug use, people involved in uh, selling sex uh, uh, have also kind of a requested test. And our return rate, so basically people getting back in touch with us with their results is around 70%. So we're able to process who those people are who've got back to us and told us as their results. And we can see that there's 18 reactives uh, specifically in Scotland. So. And moving on from that, um, we saw during COVID the there was uh, restricted access to sexual health services. Um, in response to what we were hearing from clients, we decided to, in partnership again with NHS Tayside, um, offer a home testing uh, test kit. Now, there's a bit of triage that goes on, but effectively, someone uh, orders a test kit. We have a basic triage on what kind of test they might need, whether it be chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis, and what the testing sites are. So urine, throat swab, rectal swab, uh, et cetera. Uh, and what we are seeing, this uh, initiative started back in April of this year. And what we're seeing now as a result of the Get Yourself an MOT campaign is that people are coming back to us who have not tested with us in a long, long time or not tested at all in the past several years. And as Dave mentioned previously, we're also seeing an increase in the number of people ordering test kits who are declaring they were born in a higher risk country. Uh, they have higher risk partners. They are declaring that they've paid for or been paid for sex uh, and that they are injecting drug users. So this campaign and the fact that we are able to give those people the ability to test themselves at home without having to go to um, a clinic setting, without having to really engage with someone. And it's that confidential aspect that's been brought out in a couple of previous sessions that I've been in that seems to be quite important people. And this seems to be relevant um, for people who are living in rural areas as well. So, uh, the, uh, Jimmy just spoke there, they've introduced a home sampling service uh, for chlamydia, gonorrhea, HIV, cephalis and hepatitis in uh, Tayside, which has been funded specifically <coughs> NHS Tayside. Uh, following on from that success, uh, as of December, we'll also be introducing this into uh, Ayrshire and Fife. Uh, this is funded specifically by the health boards. So, what started off as a pilot in Tayside, is now being you know kind of rolled out across other areas and i suspect in terms of where we were commissioned to do work this will all be also be something we'll introduce in the next year or so in other areas as well so so what is the aim to increase education and knowledge of hiv uh, it's about prevention. It's always about prevention. If you know your status, you can prevent uh, your uh, ongoing infection, but you can also get, be cured of any infection, especially if it's kind of chlamydia or gonorrhea or treatable infections. HIV, if someone starts treatment and they're living with HIV, as most people know, they cannot pass on their HIV to their sexual partners. So therefore prevention comes in. Care and treatment, if you know your status, uh, in terms of uh, STI status or HIV status, it's really important to you know, kind of address issues around care and treatment. And stigma. The more we talk about HIV and other STIs and we, more, we normalize testing, we can overcome some of the issues around stigma. And we can increase the number of people who know their status. And as I've said, we can reduce ongoing HIV infections. But we can also improve sexual health overall, including those who are disadvantaged and those living in uh, rural areas. And we can see from the stats, if we dig deeper, where people are coming from as well. In terms of home testing, uh, quite a huge percentage of those that are kind of requesting home testing live in remote and rural areas. And more so, people are requesting when they find it difficult to get a test at a local sexual health service, because as we know, while COVID's been going on, the services have been restricted to people who are symptomatic. So. And in particular, in rural areas, if we think about uh, Tayside, um, the, there are sexual health centres in Dundee and Aberdeen. 
uh, but physically there's nothing in between. So how do we get to people who live in rural parts of Angus? How do we get to people living in rural parts of Perthshire? Uh, and of course, these uh, bullet points here, prevention, care and treatment stigma, increase the number of people who know their status. That's all part of the strategies uh, aimed at the 2030 initiative in ending HIV transmissions. Um, so that's us. Uh, a brief whirlwind of our uh, recent um, testing initiatives. Thank you very much indeed uh, for coming to the session. I would now welcome questions from... No, Jim, Jim, we're going to take questions at the end of the session after both presentations. Okay, thank you, Alistair. Okay. Sorry. Um, thank you, Jimmy and, and David, for a great presentation. Um, always interesting, and I think any conversation about testing is a valuable one kind of know that that's the game changer. So the more people test, the more we um, reduce stigma, certainly just to echo that, never ever does any harm. So I'm going to um, bring to the stage um, Gavin Bryce, who's going to present the recent data from um, HIV Scotland's HIV test, self-test Scotland. Gavin um, is the Chief Operations Officer for HIV Scotland and has a background in research and public health commissioner. Well, thanks, Alistair, and uh, thanks to my colleagues, David and Jimmy, for your presentation. Um, and thanks for your kind attention. I'm Gavin Bryce, as Alistair said. Uh, and on behalf of HIV Scotland, it's my great pleasure uh, to do this presentation today, which is I've titled HIV Self-Testing in the Era of uh, COVID-19. So we know that, let me just move my slide forward. We, we know, of course, that COVID has really significantly impacted not only the accessibility of uh, place-based HIV testing services, but also the capacity. Those of you, I think, who attended the opening plenary session yesterday will have heard Dr. Daniela Brawley talk about HIV testing essentially falling off a cliff. So in response to that, HIV Self-Test Scotland was launched, and it was originally launched in 2020, just as the COVID pandemic really started to grip and lockdown began. And it's been done with the generous support and funding from the Scottish uh, Government. Now, essentially, the service is free to anyone living in Scotland. So as long as you're usually resident in Scotland or would like your kit delivered to an address in Scotland, then you're eligible. And as long as you're 16 years or older. It is a, a dedicated website service. So all orders are made through our website, which is HIV test.scot and just as I'm speaking here it'd be great uh, as I've just now introduced this service if you can put into the chat yes if you have heard of this service before and no if you've never heard of it before so just use the chat over here just be interesting to to get a sense of whether or not you've heard of the service I'd really appreciate that so um, as I said the, the service was originally launched in 2020 just as the the COVID pandemic started but earlier this year, we actually paused the service to learn lessons from that first year uh, so that we could uh, improve the service. And, and indeed, we relaunched the service in June 2021. Uh, and what we're really trying to do here was not only streamline the ordering service, but as I say, learn those lessons and implement them. What we wanted to do was to increase all of the contact points that we have with the service users and to make sure that we were giving as much health promotion advice and support as we possibly could. Ultimately, what we were looking for was a kind of Amazon-like experience so that as somebody who's using the service, they understand that their order has been received, they receive, they receive shipping updates, as well as ongoing health promotion advice and support should it be needed. And all of our orders are fulfilled within 40 hours. So what I mean by that is that from the point at which we receive your order, it is sent to our fulfillment team. Uh, and normally within 40 hours, it is in the post and in the hands of Royal Mail. And all of our orders are sent out using discrete packaging. So there's no branding. It's just a, a plain uh, jiffy bag envelope. Now, we use the Simplitude Buy Me test, which in the UK is supplied by Owen Mumford. Similar to what, what, what Jimmy uh, has just been presenting about, Jimmy and David. So it's, a, it's an at-home test. You can do it yourself. It's very simple to use, finger stick. Um, there are very clear instructions that are supplied within the test kit itself. But we also include a, a video. So there's a how-to video, which is housed on our website. And we send links to that via uh, messages, including by email 
and text messaging, just so that people understand exactly how to use the test kit. And similarly, it provides uh, results really quite quickly. Certainly in under 15 minutes, you will have a result. So we, once the, we, the, the service user gets to the end of the process, same as THT service, we encourage everybody to submit the result, regardless to what that result is, so that we can make sure that they are getting the correct support, you know, so that we can make sure that they are signposted into other services if required. And as I say, we continue to provide information to anybody who uses the service through various means, of course, everything's available on our website, but people do receive ongoing emails, text messages, and of course, we, we do have conversations over the telephone with some people who use the service. So the service has now only been running for around a year and a half, not, not, not a very long period of time. And in that time, we've, we're really proud that we have processed over 9,000 orders uh, have gone through uh, the, the HIV Self-Test Scotland service. And of that, uh, 16 people uh, who have told us their result, uh, we, we, have, we know are provisionally positive. We say provisionally, of course, because anyone who receives a positive result using a, a self-test kit does have to have confirmatory uh, diagnosis via their, their local sexual health service. So I mentioned, of course, that this service began in 2020, but the next few slides that I'm going to present on now are really just since we relaunched the service. So all of the data that I'm now going to talk about is from June of this year onwards. And since that time, actually, we have processed 2,462 orders. So everybody who places an order, we do ask them to submit voluntary uh, demographic data. People don't need to, but as you can see here, uh, when we ask people to uh, describe their gender identity, since June, we found that 91% of people were happy to provide us with that information. And so what I'm presenting here is fairly, fairly accurate and representative of the overall population of people who use the service. And as you can see, the majority describe their gender identity as male. So around 70% of people who use this service uh, are male and the other sexual, uh, the other gender identities are there on the slide for you to see. Very happy, by the way, of course, to share my slides as well, uh, should anybody want it. We also ask people to describe their sexual orientation. And from our sample, around 73% of all people who ordered were happy to give us this information. You can see here that the majority of people uh, describe their sexual orientation as gay, gay men, so around 52% with around 36% uh, heterosexual or straight. And again, you can see the other sexual orientations on screen. What I would say, interestingly, is that when we actually look geographically, when we break it down by health board region, there are uh, variations. So for example, in the Aberdeenshire and Aberdeen city area, the, the majority of people um, uh, describe their sexual orientation as heterosexual. So it will be interesting as we build up our data set, as we continue to deliver this service, to, to look more closely at those, those, dif those different um, demographics. We also, of course, ask people about their age. So people are given a, an age bracket and to select which one is uh, appropriate for them. Again, a really high uh, return in terms of responses here. 94% of all orders are happy to give us this information. And as you can see there, that there's around 43% of people are sitting between that 25 to 34 age uh, bracket. And then the next highest group is actually the younger group, 18 to 24. So this is a service that is being used predominantly by people between the ages of 18 to 34. Although, as you can see, older age groups are also uh, using the service. So once the, 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 the service user has got to the end of their journey, so they've ordered their test, they've used their test, they've submitted their result, we ask people to provide us uh, their views of their overall experience of using the service. And this is done by an online questionnaire. Uh, the questionnaire itself has got a range of kind of rating style questions where they're given a statement and they have to rate that statement uh, using a five star system. Uh, but we also ask them open ended questions and I'm going to present just a small amount of the, the data from that. So to date, we've had around 171 responses, which is about 7% of the total uh, orders that we've received. 
So in terms of rating questions, here's an example of a really simple one. So we, we ask people, you know, thinking about the ease of use in terms of the ordering process, how would they rate that using five stars? And it's great to see here that the average rating for that is, is 4.9%. So overall, people feel that the, the, the system, the ordering process is a really convenient and easy system to use. Similarly, we ask people to give us their rating on a five-star basis about the, the information that's available on the website in, in relation to its usefulness. And again, 4.9%, sorry, not 4.9%, 4.9 out of five stars uh, for that particular dimension. We also ask people to rate the communication more broadly. So this isn't necessarily about the information on the website, but it's talking now about the SMS communications, the emails, and of course, the support calls that we provide people who use the service and overall we had 4.7 out of five stars for that and i'll talk a little bit more about communication in just a second so i mentioned that we also have open-ended questions and i'm going to present just two examples of this uh, in the short time i've got available this morning and um, all of our qualitative data we analyze it using a system called in vivo nothing fancy it's just a really useful piece of of qualitative software, but it is an academic standard piece of software. And what this does is it's allowing us to be very systematic and robust eh, about how we take that feedback from individuals so that we can build models and really understand what people are telling us in terms of feedback. So let's just give you a snapshot of this now. So one question that we ask everybody is to tell us what they think are the best aspects of using the service. And over the next couple of slides, I'm going to highlight what people have told us. So you can see there that really the, the ease of use and the convenience of the service is something that people felt was definitely among the best aspects. The test itself, people found it easy to use. Fast delivery. So I, I mentioned we do try and make sure that orders are fulfilled within 40 hours, Royal Mail depending, and you know what <laughs> drivers uh, driver availability but definitely people felt that, that, that their order was received very quickly. The quality of the information I, on the website, but also the communication and support that is provided after the order has gone through, people again felt that, that was best uh, best aspect of the service. Confidential and discreet. Now, of course, this is being done at home. People liked the fact they could do it at home. They felt that that offered them more confidentiality than perhaps going to a place-based service. But also the fact that when the kit arrives, it's very discreet, as I mentioned earlier, plain packaging, no branding at all, and very fast results. So once you initiate that test, you're likely to have a result in under 15 minutes. So let's have a look at some of the uh, quotes that were received from individuals. So let me maybe begin with that one right in the middle there in green. So uh, here's a quote from a user saying, most importantly, all of the communication, email and text surrounding the service were incredibly reassuring, supportive and well-toned, not easy in a text. It very much felt like there was a community of folk there. Had the test been positive, I think you're running a great service. Well done. And then just on the left of the screen in the yellow, it's very easy to understand and perform in a home, very private and highly informative. I would totally recommend it. And below that, it's pretty slick from start to finish, really clever. I'll just read out one more, but by all means, do, do kind of have a look at what's on the screen there. But the one at the bottom, if I can read that out, so simple, efficient, private, discreet, uh, convenient, and as a woman, gender inclusive. So some really amazing feedback where we're really quite humbled that people have taken the time to, to go to such lengths to explain to us what they felt were the best aspects of the service. Going on from that, people also, you know, the, the fact that this test is being done at home definitely was something that people appreciated. And actually what they were telling us is that the fact that they're doing it at home at a time and place that's convenient for them, that they're able to take control of it and the fact that they're able to get results really quickly. So as I say, in under 15 minutes, the peace of mind that this is offering people, just reducing anxiety is something that people really shared with us. And particularly people coming from rural areas who maybe perhaps have not been able to access traditional services during, during the COVID era, definitely appreciated this and felt that it reduced the, their anxiety. And um, free, of course, the service is completely free to anyone living in Scotland. This was something that was appreciated. It's flexibility, I've mentioned it's gender inclusiveness, 
and people also talked about it being an overall stigma-free service. So just a few final quotes there on that one, if I can take that, say, um, the one on the left in blue. So thank you for providing the service at a time when I can't even access normal STI testing in the NHS. It was great to be able to order one for free very easily from your service. I'd never taken an HIV test before, so I'm pleased to now know my, my status. In the middle there at the top in green, I was able to know my HIV status while all local sexual health services were reduced and effectively unavailable to me for over a year due to the pandemic. Below that one, this was great and I hope to see it continue. Knowing your status is really important. So whatever can be done to break down barriers and stigma is fantastic. So as I say, again, really humbled by the time people have taken and the consideration as well in providing us this, with this really constructive feedback. Um, we also asked a question to look at, you know, if we were to change something from tomorrow, what would it be? What would you advise us to change? Um, so for some people, um, the frequency of communication, they just felt it was too much. The majority of people did appreciate the communication, but there were a number of people who felt, actually, you know, it's a bit intrusive. We would rather that, that we didn't have quite so much. So we've heard that and we're going to be looking at that uh, in the weeks to come. Um, some people are, are a bit hesitant about taking their own blood. I know it can be quite a, a, a difficult process. The testing kit itself does have an automatic lancet, so it does make it as easy as possible. But some people do require a little bit more advice about how to make sure that the, the blood sample that is collected is sufficient for the test to run. Some people felt that actually we should be doing more. So rather than just HIV, we should be adding to this service. So including test kits, for example, for hep C, as well as other STIs. Better promotion of the service was something that people asked us to do. So I'm looking across at the chat here, and I think the majority of people that have responded said, yes, they had heard of the, the service, but I can see Sister Anne, for example, you hadn't. So I hope you now know about it and you can, you can spread the word, but certainly better promotion is something that we are taking on board. People also asked us to consider, although it might be complex logistically, but to, for us to consider how we might better link up with colleagues in related NHS services, particularly around PrEP was mentioned by a couple of people. And actually a subscription model, we, we had quite a few people who said, well, look, actually, why don't you just routinely send me an HIV test, let's say once a year or, or once every six months? So lots of lots of good ideas there from from individuals. And what we're trying to do is like in a traditional evaluation of a service, of course, you 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 run the service, and then after it's been it's due to close or it's coming to an end, you evaluate and you see how it's done. We're not going to be doing that to HIV Self Test Scotland. We're doing what I call a developmental evaluation approach. So that means every three months we take stock of what people are telling us. And we change our service live, so in real time. So all of the things that we're hearing here in terms of what we can do better, when we say, uh, what can we do if we started it tomorrow, we mean that genuinely, and we will be taking on board uh, anything that we feel we can change very quickly, as soon as we can. And so again, uh, just as my, my kind of final slide here, uh, people are saying things like, you know, on the top left there, uh, perhaps had it integrated with PrEP provision on the same basis. Uh, on the right in the kind of orange colour, I found the text and emails a bit much personally, no problem. And on the top right there, better publicity to spread the word of this great service. So um, that's just a very quick uh, dive through. I'm going to just put into the chat just now the web address. Uh, by the way, I encourage all of you listening today, go and test that out. Go over to hivtest.scot, order your free test kit. Uh, if you don't know your status, it's a great way of doing it in the comfort of your own home. But it's also good to actually see uh, how you find the service, and we'd love to get your feedback too. Uh, there's also, I don't know if you've noticed within this conference, but we have event booths, and we do have one for HIV Self Test Scotland. And I will be manning the booth today from about half past one, so during during lunchtime. So I'm going to hand back to Alistair now uh, so that we can take some questions, but just to thank you for your very kind attention. Thank you very much, Gavin, um, Jimmy and David. Interesting food for thought. Exciting times. I mean, much as COVID has been many, many, many challenging things for many, many people, I think we now have a, an opportunity to recalibrate much of what we have done. 
is what we have done fit for purpose going forward. New systems and new structures will have to emerge. We know that we're going to have to lose a few to, to win a few. Testing is um, something that's critical to the HIV response. And it's something that this country has traditionally done well. Exciting things that we do know about in the pipeline. We've got an HIV elimination target scheduled for next year. <clears throat> We've got a revision of our bloodborne virus and HIV framework tabled for next year too. So exciting times. In tandem with that, um, Scottish um, 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 Health Promotion Services and our sexual health leads have come together to develop a home sampling service for Scotland um, that will consider other STIs as part of that mechanism. So exciting times. Now, just about opening the floor now to some questions. Again, I just want to to reinforce our message that this is um, a place of kind, considerate narrative and conversation so we can confer in a way that we get the most value from it. I've just got a question. Jimmy, <clears throat> having been involved in, in the testing um, narrative in Scotland, are there, and, and obviously there's, there's um, THT is a UK-wide organisation, are there any lessons to be learned from what's actually happening in um, concentrated, uh, concentrated centres like London or Manchester? that can be applied to Scotland? Are there any, any lessons that can be learned for provision in rurality that you would maybe like to flag? I think there are always lessons to be learned, uh, Alistair, and it's we're constantly learning um, because this is what we're trying to do is a very person-centred service here. Um, we know that people in rural settings their difficulty in ac accessing sexual health services was just multiplied throughout the COVID uh, pandemic. Um, and the lessons we're always learning is how, how do we engage those people? How do we bring them uh, out into a place where they feel comfortable talking about their sexual health yeah. and talking about a need to address something that's related to the sexual health, whether that be just a basic question. I had a phone call uh, recently from a client that said um, they had identified uh, a skin uh, condition, so on and so forth. What does this mean? I don't want to talk to my GP about it. And we hear this, and I'm sure you do as well. We hear this quite a lot. I don't want to talk to my GP about it. I don't want, I'm embarrassed to talk to friends about it. We need to make sure that we're providing people with a space where they can actually talk about it as well as to actually get a test. Yeah, I mean, my background before I um, started working in HIV Scotland, I was with the Family Planning Association and maybe lessons learned from contraception, choices, choices, choices. Yeah. You know, I think, I think I mean, you know, I, I, when I, I'm HIV positive, so when I was tested, it was a, a waiting process and then you get the result and then it's, you know, so it's, it's, it's really exciting to see how testing has changed. I think the great thing about Scotland and the pipeline for Scotland, the exciting thing is we have political will we know this. We have options that are on the pipeline and that are offers on the table at this time. So I think the great thing about it is, and it's free, which is which is in itself remarkable. Scotland is the first country that's actually offered a postal service, and yeah. recently the first country to have offered injectable HIV treatment. So the innovation that's happening in Scotland for me is incredibly encouraging. Interestingly, I think, um, I think it's Lloyd's. Uh, chemist charges at least a hundred pound for what they call an MSM home testing kit. Um, uh, it's key to actually getting people to use this. As you've just mentioned, it is there's there's no reason to charge them. We need to make sure that that service is provided um, because we're looking at um, we're looking at this also through the lens of public health. Yeah, I mean years ago. During the Brook years, we had a campaign called "If Not You, Then Who." So, agency remember that in the agency and ownership and choice was kind of the, the critical frame that people were engaging. In. Do we have any other questions from from the floor, Alistair? Perhaps while we're if there's some some thoughts being generated, uh, I'd just like to comment on you know my my talk was about um, HIV testing in the era of COVID, and certainly what we're seeing. If I can use the analogy of, you know, the workplace, you know, we're seeing people who uh, had to, have had to work from home for quite a long period of time now and are, are now um, being asked back to the workplace. And, you know, we're talking about blended working now, aren't we? So people may be working from home a little bit as well as uh, spending some time in the office. 
And I think what we're looking at is a similar situation in HIV testing is going to be a blended approach now. Because actually, when you offer people the opportunity to do an HIV test at home versus having to go into place-based care, having those choices on the table for people, I think, is what's important. So this blended approach, I would hate to think that we're just going to go back to, you know, all place-based services and, and, and diminishing the, the availability of people's um, choice in terms of home testing. So I'd be interesting, you know, to, to see people who are listening to the conversation just now, just put into the chat, you know, do you do you agree with me? Do you think that this kind of blended approach is the one that's required? Or do you feel that it should be one way or the other? It'd be great to get people's thoughts. It's a good point, Gavin. And a lot of the feedback I hear face to face from clients is that it's a mix. Yes, some would definitely prefer to come into a clinic because that's how they feel good about talking about what's going on with their lives and their, their sexual health. And a lot of people want the convenience and indeed privacy of okay. doing it at home. Yeah, I certainly get feedback from both. There's, I mean, one size does not fit all. No. I think, you know, it's, it applies to condoms and it applies to testing. Um, we have a question from Sharon Moore. Sharon, can we just invite you to, to the stage and you can just ask if you're happy to? If not, I'm happy to read it out for you. No? Okay, I'll just read it if you come. Great. How do people find out about the test, for example? Is this shared with service users, patients and GPs, hospitals or in educational settings? Um, Jimmy, I can ask about your promo first and then we'll come to Gavin. Yeah, sure. Um, we don't share any testing data at all. So when someone comes in for a test, whether it be a postal test or into one of our community clinics, um, all the data that we um, gather is kept and obviously we are ruled by clinical governance. If someone has a reactive test to one of the antibody tests uh, or has a, a reactive test to um, an STI test and we get the results from the lab, we fast track that person into NHS Tayside Sexual Health Services for immediate treatment. So we have a referral pathway with NHS Tayside that ensures that that client who's tested uh, positive um, gets treatment and seen immediately. Yeah. Uh, we do not share patient information with GPs, uh, hospitals or educational settings. Sharon, does that answer your question? I'll just go back to you in a second. Do you have anything to add, Gavin? Sure, Sharon, thanks for, for the question. Also for your comment earlier in the chat, it's really great to, to hear that you've got friends who have been using our service and have really, really felt comfortable using it. So thanks for that feedback. Um, I read Sharon's question slightly differently. Uh, I think what Sharon's asking is just generally, how do people find out about these services uh, rather than data sharing, although I'd echo what Jimmy has said, we don't we don't share any patient identifiable data, although we do share uh, synthesized data uh, with our, our NHS colleagues. Uh, by that, I mean, you know, the number of people who identify as male, that type of thing. Um, so what we're trying to do is um, get the word out, partly through this conference, for example. We do have social media campaigns. Uh, we advertise this with all of our NHS colleagues who are made aware. We, we meet, Alistair, you can maybe tell me, I think it's what, once a month or sometimes twice a month with NHS colleagues, and we, 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 we constantly uh, update them on data in their local area. Uh, we, we also um, advertise with uh, GPs, so GP magazines, and we're hoping to put out some, some posters. But yes, we need help getting the word out so that people know that this service is there for them to use. Okay. Um, in, yeah, in addition to that, I would add that where we are commissioned, we use our NHS um, partners to get our campaigns out into GP surgeries uh, where possible. So we do try and use every method possible to make sure we capture the widest audience. And I'll just go back to the link that I put for the THT HIV test finder that uses postcode information. So we provide HIV test kits where we, for free, where we are commissioned. But also, if someone has a postcode where we are not commissioned by an NHS health board, it will point to HIV Scotland's uh, website so that no one 
goes without the test. Yeah. So, any other questions? One question, I'm just looking at the chat. 50 does not come alone, the eyesight goes. Um, so there is provision across Scotland, either via locally commissioned offers through THT. So THT's website can certainly point you to what you have locally. And then there's a pathway through to that should your local area not commission an HIV um, point, um, point of care or a home testing offer. So there is provision. Um, obviously, um, as activists and lobbyists um, and, um, and people involved, we're very keen to have a robust offer for Scotland that's fit for purpose for everyone. So the future's bright. If there are no other questions, I'm going to bring the session to a close with 10 minutes off for good behaviour. Yeah. And Alistair, if I could just remind everybody, uh, I hope to see many of you in the booth, uh, the HIV Self Test Scotland booth during lunchtime today from about half past one onwards. You're competing with mindfulness. Well, um, <laughs> so, so you can either go and, and have an HIV test or contemplate your mindfulness at lunchtime. <laughs> Thank you so much. We now have a poll, which we just invite you to complete. Um, this is just for us to gather some data about the conference for our industry partners and, of course, for the reflective piece at the end. So I invite you just to complete a very, very short, honestly, short survey. And thank you for your time in this session.